Senator Simon Birmingham is the Minister for, for Finance. He's leading the review into Parliament's workplace culture. Thanks very much for your time, Senator. Hello, Lee. It's, thank you for the opportunity. On the Brittany Higgins matter, can I ask, when did you first become aware of the alleged rape at Parliament House? Uh, so I only became aware of the alleged rape uh, when the media story became public. Uh, I had been made aware at an earlier point in relation to the storage of CCTV footage um, about an incident that the AFP had shown interest in. The, uh, the President of the Senate had advised me, as I understand he had previously advised the then Leader of the Government in the Senate and the Leader of the Opposition in the Senate in accordance with practices just around those CCTV issues. And did you not ask what it was in relation to? I was told at the time that, uh, that it was, uh, was being stored at the request of the AFP. Um, but that the AFP did not have an active investigation underway at the time. But you must have been a, a bit curious, because that would be presumably pretty interesting that the AFP was seeking CCTV footage. Well, we can all be curious, Lee, but it's also important that we let uh, the authorities, in this case sure. the Australian Federal Police, to actually do their jobs. Sure, but um, I'm just, in that I'm just case, asking, the responsibility... you, you didn't ask at the time what yeah, it was wasn't about? My place wasn't my place to go and ask about matters that pertain to the police investigation. It was my place to be advised by the parliamentary office holders that the right thing was being done in terms of uh, the CCTV footage being stored for the purposes of any investigation that the AFP want to un undertake, and in no way would I want to get in the way of any such investigation. Did any rumours come to your ears that it could be some sort of um, sexual matter? No, not at that stage. You're running the government side of the cross-party review. How close are you to appointing an independent person to run that and what kind of progress has been made? So, look, I have had, uh, had conversations throughout the course of this week with former staff, uh, with the Sex Discrimination Commissioner and other experts in this field, uh, with representatives of the Labor Party, of the Greens, of different independents. Uh, and I'm pleased to see that there's a high level of consensus around the need for a truly independent review that's undertaken at arm's length of government, one that can look effectively at how we change culture and prevent these incidences, be it sexual assault, harassment, bullying from occurring in the future, how we make sure there's effective supports in place for staff, uh, particularly to have the confidence to report incidents and to know that they will be supported through the reporting of any incidents uh, and effective, um, and is anything effective concrete advice to report yet? for individuals. Anyone appointed yet? Uh, we, I, haven't, uh, I haven't reached a point of an appointment. Uh, I have further discussions through the rest of this week with other staff representatives, with union representatives, uh, and at the end of that I hope that we, uh, we can proceed quickly to finalise the terms of reference and appointment. On the complaints process, it's the Finance Minister who deals with, uh, his, his department deals with staff complaints. It's a problematic system where the findings of the complaint go back to the Minister or the MP whose office is involved. There's not a lot of recourse for the staffer. Do you think that should be overhauled? I think these are very valid things for the review to take a look at and it's why I want to make sure that it is a genuine, independent, arm's length review that can come back uh, with the appropriate recommendations for how we can make staff in this place uh, feel amongst the safest in the country as they should be and protected with the best practices in the country as they should be. And that's certainly my aspiration in going into this work. And I know it's shared by those across party lines who I've engaged with in recent days. I checked with Brittany Higgins this afternoon whether the Prime Minister or any Liberal ministers had personally reached out to her since this matter became public. And the answer was no. Why is that? Uh, well, look, I can't speak uh, for others. Uh, clearly, it's only become public um, uh, as a result of media interviews. Uh, I understand that Brittany Higgins uh, spoke with the police today, which is something we welcome and will give full cooperation to. In terms of the review I'm undertaking, uh, I have seen in Brittany's statements that she is uh, keen to have a say in the construct of that review. But, and, but I'm uh, just asking, sorry, sorry to important. interrupt, Senator. I'm uh, just well, asking on a human level why, why well, no one's I, reached I, out to a former colleague. Well, I, I just wanted to say, uh, Lee, uh, that uh, I have uh, made clear that I am uh, keen, if Brittany wishes, to hear from her or to speak with her about the construct of that review uh, and for her to have that input, which I know she thinks is important. But does it strike you as odd that a former um, young Liberal staffer has alleged that she was raped in a minister's office and, and that she's felt hung out to dry to the, need that, to the degree that she's felt she's needed to go public about it and no senior Liberal in the parliament has, has rung her to go, wow, I'm really sorry, I, I hope you're okay. Okay. The job that, uh, that I've got is hopefully to make sure that in the future people can have absolute confidence to take these matters 
to the police or to get the support services to talk about it uh, with others who can advise and assist them through this so that they don't have to go to the media first and undertake the, the harrowing ordeal of sharing these stories uh, publicly. We would much rather that a police investigation happen where it's a criminal offence uh, or that indeed the support is there to help people deal with other issues up front and to see them satisfactorily resolved. As a minister, if a criminal incident took place in your office, would you feel it your obligation obligation to inform the Prime Minister? Uh, well, I'd see my obligation first and foremost as, uh, as making sure that, that a victim or, or an involved person uh, had support available to them, counselling support and assistance, and that they were encouraged, if it was a criminal matter, to take it to the police. Um, and then I would think in terms of a judgement call to tell the Prime Minister of the existence of the incident. Um, but, uh, but I do think you have to be mindful of protecting if it is the wish of the individual to have their privacy protected, to protect that as well. But you're in, from, what, from what I understand, your inclination as a minister would be to brief the Prime Minister in that kind of a scenario? It, it would be, Lee, but my first consideration would be for the individual, trying to encourage them uh, to get the support that they need. I'm not a professional uh, in providing that support, uh, nor would you or any other employer be. That's why we have professional counsellors. It's why we should make sure that they are there to be accessed. Uh, and then, of course, if it is a criminal matter, uh, to encourage and support them to go to the police for the thorough investigation. On, on another matter, JobKeeper, when you take together the rate at which unemployment benefits are set, the new Dobbin scheme, if people decline a job, the requirement to show that you've applied for 20 jobs per month, isn't it a, a fair conclusion that the system is punitive, that if you have the misfortune to find yourself in a recession unemployed, that you will be punished for that? Well, Lee, uh, what we've seen is, uh, is that each and every month, including during the step downs at uh, the different rates of JobKeeper and the JobSeeker supplement, there have been more jobs created in the Australian economy. And we do know that there are parts of the country uh, that are crying out for people to fill jobs. It's why one of the changes we announced yesterday was not just the existence of the $6,000 relocation allowance for people who can move, but that some of that will now be able to be paid up front to help people with the upfront costs of moving uh, to where there may be work that people can undertake. I, I know it's not always easy there, but I think Australians do expect us to have a system that provides a social safety net, as we do, uh, but also an expectation on those who are able to work to be actively looking and to take those jobs where they're available. Senator Birmingham, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Lee. My pleasure. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 7.30's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.